My name is Diana Doggett, and I'm the Family and Consumer Sciences Extension Agent in Lexington, Kentucky. These days, our daily lives are flooded with numbers, PIN numbers, phone numbers, and various account numbers. But there are also certain health numbers that can save and extend your life. These numbers are associated with cholesterol, triglycerides, blood pressure, blood sugar, body mass index, and waist circumference. With us today is Dr. Molly Aylshire, a professor and nurse practitioner with the University of Kentucky, and Teresa Lee, a registered dietitian from the University of Kentucky as well. Together they will talk about health numbers and the relationship between those numbers as they contribute to healthy lifestyle and overall well-being. Molly, let's start with you. Molly, the recommended target cholesterol level for men and women is less than 200 milligrams per deciliter of blood according to the American Heart Association. Please tell us what cholesterol is and what, why is this number important and how can you go about getting it checked? Yes, so thank you, Diana. Cholesterol is a waxy substance. It's found in the fats, or often what we call the lipids, in your blood. And it is essential for the body to build and maintain healthy cells and essential hormones. Most cholesterol is made by the human body, but a smaller amount, approximately 25% or so, comes from the foods we eat, particularly from things such as meat, fish, and dairy. So there are actually two forms of cholesterol, one called low-density lipoprotein cholesterol, or LDL cholesterol, also known as the bad cholesterol. Then the other type, high-density lipoprotein cholesterol, or HDL cholesterol, is the good cholesterol. So too much LDL cholesterol creates plaque that can accumulate and clog the arteries, and this is what can cause heart disease and strokes. HDL cholesterol, however, is good because it carries harmful cholesterol away from the arteries, helping to protect from heart attack and stroke. On the next slide, I think we'll talk about the fact that high cholesterol actually has no symptoms. So many people do not even know that they are at risk. But there are known factors that can increase the risk of developing high cholesterol. Some of these factors you can control, which are highlighted here in green, such as diet, physical activity, and weight. Others are out of our control, but we know they still affect cholesterol levels. These are things here in red, such as family history, age, unfortunately risk increases with age, and gender. For example, postmenopausal women are at the greatest risk. To increase good cholesterol, or HDL, and lower bad cholesterol, LDL, what should a person do? So the good news is that you can take several steps to improve or maintain cholesterol levels. One of the first and important things that we can do is replacing saturated fats in your diet with unsaturated fats. So saturated fats are usually found in animal products, things such as beef, lamb, pork, poultry with the skin on, butter, cream, cheese, and dairy products that are made from whole milk. Unsaturated fats, which we want to increase in the diet, include omega-3 fatty acids. And these should be used in place of the saturated fats mentioned a moment ago. So some examples of foods containing unsaturated fats would be fish, such as salmon, trout, and herring, things like avocados, olives, walnuts, peanuts, and liquid vegetable oils, such as soybean, corn, safflower, canola, olive, and sunflower. The next step is a little shorter. It is adding soluble fiber to your diet. So some examples of soluble fiber sources would be oats, fruits, vegetables, and legumes. The next step is one we all know, but perhaps don't always do, 
exercising regularly. We want to try to achieve at least 150 minutes of exercise every week. Maintaining a healthy weight is another important way to maintain a healthy cholesterol level. So another important step is to avoid smoking and also to avoid exposure to secondhand smoke. Of course, it is also essential to talk to your healthcare provider about your cholesterol numbers, treatment options, and if medication might need to be considered. How do you check your cholesterol and how often should a person have their cholesterol checked? So cholesterol can be checked through simple blood tests. The American Heart Association recommends having cholesterol levels checked every five years starting at the age of 20. And your healthcare provider will tell you if you should fast before your blood test. To fast, it is recommended that you do not eat for nine to 12 hours prior to the test. This can help to more accurately measure the total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, and the triglycerides in your blood. You may need to have your cholesterol and other risk factors assessed more often if your total cholesterol is 200 milligrams per deciliter or higher, if your HDL cholesterol levels are lower than 40 milligrams per deciliter, or if you have other risk factors for heart disease and stroke. Molly, it is my understanding that triglycerides, like cholesterol, are a form of fat that circulate in the bloodstream. Could you please tell us more about triglycerides? Yes, so triglycerides are responsible for the energy that tissues need to function. Similar to cholesterol, when the blood levels of triglycerides become too high, over 150 milligrams per deciliter, the risk for developing heart disease increases. Triglycerides are often measured simultaneously with cholesterol and should also be tested every five years beginning at age 20 or more often depending on risk factors. According to the American Heart Association, as I mentioned, a fasting triglyceride level of less than 150 milligrams per deciliter is desirable. So what are ways in which you can help maintain or lower triglyceride levels? So similar to cholesterol, Dietary and lifestyle changes help lower triglyceride levels. First, avoiding fatty foods and foods high in cholesterol, such as processed meats, fried foods, and whole fat dairy products are important. You should eat fruits, vegetables, non-fat, or low fat dairy products most often. Eat foods that are high in the good unsaturated fats we mentioned previously. Do not drink alcohol in excess. Of course, exercising moderately for at least 150 minutes per week is still very important, as well as maintaining a healthy body weight. And finally, similar to cholesterol, discussing this on an individual basis with your healthcare provider is an essential step. Blood pressure can vary from minute to minute with changes in exercise, stress, sleep, and posture. But it should normally be less than 120 over 80. Molly, can you please tell us what does that mean? So blood pressure is recorded as two numbers and it's written as a ratio. The top number, called the systolic blood pressure, measures the pressure in the arteries when the heart beats or pumps to the body. The bottom number, or diastolic blood pressure, is the amount of pressure in the arteries when the heart is resting and refilling with blood between heartbeats. So when is blood pressure that is too high or too low? So high blood pressure or hypertension is when the force of the blood flowing through your blood vessels is consistently too high. And there are a variety of factors that are linked to high blood pressure. These include things like family history, age, gender, race, an unhealthy diet, especially one that is high in sodium, drinking too much alcohol, smoking, being overweight or obese, lack of physical activity, and stress. Hypertension has few or no symptoms. 
but it can permanently damage the heart, brain, eyes, and kidneys even before an individual will feel that anything is wrong. So how often should you have your blood pressure checked? So the American Heart Association recommends blood pressure screenings also begin at age 20 and that they continue at each regular healthcare visit or at least once every two years. Now, if your blood pressure is consistently higher than 120 over 80 milligrams of mercury, you may be asked to measure it more often. Blood pressure also can be checked at home with an over-the-counter blood pressure monitoring system between healthcare visits, but this should not take the place of monitoring by a healthcare provider. So bottom line, how can a person maintain a healthy blood pressure? So maintaining a healthy blood pressure can be simple and easy. And I think you'll notice some familiar threads. Eating a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and low-fat or non-fat dairy products help to maintain a healthy blood pressure. Another important thing that can directly affect blood pressure is avoiding excess salt. Limiting alcohol is also key. Physical activity, once again, at 150 minutes a week or more is essential. Maintaining a healthy weight remains important. Managing stress also helps to maintain an appropriate blood pressure. Tobacco products should be avoided. Caffeine should be limited. And for those who may have some issues with blood pressure, Monitoring that blood pressure at home can be helpful. And of course, all individuals, whether or not they may have problems with blood pressure, should continue to talk with their healthcare provider about their blood pressure numbers, if there is a need for treatment, and if medication is recommended. And Teresa, can you tell me, or let's talk about blood sugar. What is it and what does it mean? Yeah, thanks Diana. So blood sugar or blood glucose is a type of sugar that travels through the bloodstream. It comes from carbohydrate foods and its primary function is to act as the basic fuel for our body. Um, the three main types of carbohydrates in foods are sugars, starches, and fiber. So what should your blood sugar be and how can you test for it? There are several different types of blood sugar tests including fasting blood sugar, which is measured about six to eight hours after a meal. In a person without diabetes, the fasting number gives us an accurate measure of blood sugar. The normal range is about 70 to 100 milligrams per deciliter of blood. After a meal, blood sugar will rise, but not usually above 135 to 140 milligrams per deciliter. So that leaves a narrow range of blood sugar throughout the entire day. It's important to know that glucose levels consistently lower than 70 um, is called hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. This can cause blurred vision, pounding heartbeat, agitation, nervousness, hunger, sweating, weakness, um, drowsiness, insomnia, and unclear thinking. If blood sugar levels get too low, mental functioning can become impaired and eventually, in some cases, seizures or unconsciousness can happen. While these symptoms are often corrected by eating something with sweet sugar or carbohydrates, severe hypoglycemia can be dangerous um, and it can actually be a medical emergency for which you should get help right away. Hyperglycemia, or high blood sugar, occurs when the blood sugar levels are above 180 or 200. And this can be due to not enough insulin or when the body just can't use insulin properly. These high levels will affect the ability of the kidneys to function properly and can also cause frequent urination, blurred vision, high blood pressure, extreme thirst, weakness or fatigue, unexplained weight loss, and fluid retention. Is diabetes related to blood sugar? Absolutely. Diabetes is actually the most common disease that's related to blood sugar regulation failure. 
So this is based on the body's inability to produce or use the hormone insulin. Insulin helps regulate the body's glucose levels so they don't get too high or too low. Diabetes actually affects over 25 million people, adults and children in the United States. If left untreated, diabetes complications um, can occur and these include heart disease, kidney disease, high cholesterol levels, um, clogged arteries, metabolic syndrome, and in some cases blindness, um, limb amp amputations, and even death. Wow. So Teresa, tell us how can we maintain a healthy blood sugar level? Well, yeah, so general guidelines emphasize the importance of a balanced diet, and that emphasis is on healthy carbohydrates because that's where our blood sugar is most impacted. Healthy carbs include fiber-rich fruits and vegetables without added sugar, whole grains, low-fat dairy, beans and legumes, and trying to limit added sugar in foods. So to maintain healthy blood sugar levels and prevent diabetes, we want to try to make sure we exercise regularly, eat plenty of fibers and whole grains, maintain a healthy weight, and not really focus on fad diets you might hear about. We hear a lot about BMI and waist circumference. What is BMI and why does the, si why does the size of one's waist really matter? Yeah, well, BMI stands for body mass index and both of those are health measures, health indicator measures. So BMI is that ratio between your weight and your height and it's used as a tool to help assess body fat and weight. There's three different categories of BMI. We see underweight, normal weight, overweight, obese, and extremely obese. So the normal weight range for adults is between 18.5 and 24.9. Generally speaking, a BMI over 25 is considered overweight, and a BMI over 30 is considered obese. If someone has a BMI less than 18.5, they would be considered underweight. All overweight and underweight indivi individuals should consult their medical provider. So when does a person start having their BMI checked and where do they go to get this done? Yeah, so beginning at age 20, your BMI should be addressed at each regular healthcare visit. This is really important because BMI can help indicate your risk for severe health problems, including heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, some cancers, diabetes, arthritis, urinary stress incontinence, and uh, reflux or heartburn. However, it's important to note that there are certain people who should not use BMI as the basis for determining relative disease risk. People who are athletes or bodybuilders, and then of course women who are pregnant or lactating, should not be disturbed if their BMI is not within the normal range. So how do you calculate BMI? Well, BMI is just a basic mathematical equation, and you can use the formula that we have provided here. It's a ratio of your weight divided by your height. There's also great resources online and charts that could be found at your doctor's office to check your BMI. Children and teens are actually recommended to check their BMI online because the interpretation is actually specific to their age and their sex. So this seems like an important measurement. How can a person take control of their BMI? Well, ultimately, to take control of your BMI, you wanna to try to lose weight. And so burning more calories than you consume by exercising is really important, as well as eating a healthy diet. For exercise, like Molly said, we wanna to try to achieve 150 minutes per week minimum for adults and consult with your health care provider. BMI is not the only thing we should be worried about when it comes to size and weight. Please tell us why we should know our waist circumference. 
Yeah, well, fat distribution is just as important of a tool as total body weight when it comes to weight-related health problems. This is because body fat that accumulates around the waist and stomach area poses a greater risk than fat stored in other parts of the body. Therefore, measuring your waist, size, or circumference, like BMI, can predict future health problems, such as type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and heart disease, especially when your BMI is high. Waist size can also be useful for athletes who may be categorized as overweight or obese in terms of their BMI. For example, an athlete with a lot of muscle mass may have a BMI greater than 25, which would classify him as obese on the BMI scale, but a waist circumference measurement would show that he or she is not actually overweight. Teresa, what are the recommended waist circumferences for both men and women? Well, the American Heart Association recommends a waist circumference of 40 inches or less for males and 35 inches or less for females. According to the CDC, to measure your waist, you want to place a tape measure around your bare abdomen just above your hip bone or at your belly button. Be sure that the tape is snug but doesn't compress your skin and is parallel to the floor. Relax, exhale, and measure your waist. How often should we take this measurement? Well, beginning at age 20, you should measure your waist circumference and look for changes in measurement over time, as this can indicate an increase or decrease in abdominal fat, which is associated with an increased risk of heart disease and other chronic diseases. Thank you so much, Dr. Molly Aylshower and Teresa Lee, for taking the time today to tell us about health numbers. It is clear that keeping up with your numbers is an important way to maintain a healthy lifestyle and optimal aging throughout the lifespan. Keeping up with your numbers can also help you reduce negative health effects such as obesity, diseases of the heart, hypertension, diabetes, and cancers. A lifestyle that includes regular visits to a health care provider proper nutrition and physical activity promotes these numbers and contributes to healthy aging throughout the lifespan. A special thanks to the University of Kentucky, University of Arkansas, and Kansas State University for developing the Keys to Embracing Aging program. For more information, contact your county extension office.